Dr. Goodwin. Okay. Well, yesterday afternoon, I was trying to explain water surface elevations with hand, and uh, it's actually been spring break. We were struggling pulling together some animation, so I don't have that for you, but I have just a couple of images that might explain a little more clearly what this process is. So if we could pull up the PowerPoint. So the, the question we were struggling we're, with yesterday, the additional 55 inches on top there, of the current. We've got something there, Dr. Goodwin. Per perfect, yeah. So, so the question we were dealing with is the 55 inches of sea level rise, why wouldn't that be 55 inches necessarily you, you right upstream? And so if we take a look here at the, the Delta and San Francisco Bay, the models that predict the 100-year flood elevation that are used, you have to put in two things into the computer models we used. The first is the, the, the downstream water surface elevation, which is essentially the bay or, or the ocean elevation. And then if we went way upstream, the way these models work is we also then need to put in the flood hydrograph or, or that 100-year flood discharge. And so between the upstream end of the model and that downstream water surface uh, elevation, the computer model will then give us a lot of information, but it, it gives us the water surface elevation and the, and the profile. And so uh, unfortunately, this is an engineering drawing. You're not going to be able to see it ver very clearly. But what we're looking at here on this graph is some simulations done by the Corps of Engineers and the Department of Water Resources uh, with Eric Nicola actually are taking a much closer look at this. So what you're looking at on this figure is a slice from, You've got the, us back at the, from the bay. Yeah. So if you were to be starting in the bay here, and you know, on the downstream side, maybe Susan Marsh there, San Pablo Bay, and then we're going to be going back upstream through the delta. And so here you see a lot of very squiggly lines. The bottom line on this curve is the elevation of the riverbed or the bay. The series of lines above that, just to illustrate what's going on, is what the water surface profile looks like. That's the blue line, the line in the middle. And then there's a green line on top of that, which is uh, usually just the, the top of the levees. And so the question that we were trying to illustrate yesterday is what happens if you've got sea level rise. The hydrograph or, or the conditions upstream of the delta, that's not changing in the model. What we're changing is that base elevation in the bay. And if we increase that by 55 inches, and here I just sketched on top of that in terms of the, of the red line, you can see the kind of impact that we would expect there to have. So right at the downstream end, that 55 inches of sea level rise is significant and it's 55 inches but as we begin to move back upstream through the delta that 55 inches becomes less and so in this what we're proposing in this measure is that if you didn't want to get into the hydraulics uh, at all then you could just go with the 55 inches very simple 55 inches above the the 100 year flood elevation but if you're looking at perhaps a, a very major uh, development, you may want to be a little more conservative. And at that point, you could get into a more detailed analysis, you, whether that's available through DWR at some point in the future, whether you go out and hire a hydraulic engineer, they could give you uh, a much more detailed analysis. But this uh, figure here just is intended to show, we call it a backwater curve that why that 55 inches wouldn't necessarily be the same right throughout the system. And of course, when we get right up towards Shasta and the upper Sacramento River, then the effect of sea level rise is not going to affect flood elevations whatsoever. So I hope that uh, it's just ex explains. Peter, I can't read the chart from here, but the red line beginning at the arrow and going left stops. I presume that that is some point in the interior of the delta, and maybe the wording above that would suggest... Yep. So uh, pl please don't take this. I was just trying to illustrate oh. the fact that 
there, there's a finite limit to the effect of sea level rise on flood elevations as you go back up through the system. So don't, don't, yeah, please don't read into that exactly where that's going to occur because... This is not a, a new X2 line for some no, other purpose. No, it's, it's not X2. But the point is to show that it's a, a finite impact, and that impact actually diminishes as you move upstream and you gain elevation. So, so that, that, that's the, the process. But the idea here was to try and give an out with not a lot of onerous uh, calculation the, 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 di the difference, I, I, the, the interesting thing about this is people uh, uh, who read 100-year flood protection, 200-year flood protection, whatever it is, think that has a clear, precise, understandable definition because it's using words they understand. But uh, everything I've heard from Dr. Goodwin and other experts in the field is there is very little precisely about 100 or 200 years, and it's constantly changing which puzzles people. This is simply a different configuration to reach something like the same point, and you're trying to explain that to us in this chart. That, 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 that's right. Dr. Goodwin, how much would it cost to hire somebody to evaluate what the, what the necessary level of protection would be throughout the delta to accommodate a 55-inch sea level rise that we now understand doesn't mean that you would need to raise some levees 55 inches. How much would, uh, what, what was that, what would that say? Because this would have a huge impact on state investments in bringing levees up to a particular standard if the standard is different closer to the San Francisco Bay than it is in the interior of the Delta and beyond. But before Peter answers, I might clarify this, because this is not a standard that we're intending to apply to levy design and construction. All we're saying is if you're proposing a rural residential subdivision in the Delta, five <coughs> lots or more, those building sites need to be floodproof to this elevation. We're not suggesting that this should be a standard for levies. Obviously, as we go through the levy prioritization process, Understanding how sea level rise is going to play into levy priorities will be an important element of that. So this is only a first step to begin to think through how we deal with sea level rise in the Delta. These would be areas that would be rural residential sites where it's hard to conceive that you would ever be able to have a levy that would provide protection to this level. Okay, that? so, so, so that's for flood proofing. <laughs> you, you, I, I think the, the question that you raised is a very good one, and I'm not sure if Eric Nickel or, or maybe Carl wants to respond to this, but certainly I think that this concept in the coming years of updating the flood modeling, you know, to, to understand what the flood risks are, you know, updating the bathymetries, updating the inundated areas is certainly something that is on the table and Kali, if you want to add to that. And then if, to get to your question about costs, I'd be willing to, to talk about that as well. Um, calculating this backwater curve throughout the delta is really, really quite a job and DWR is tackling the, uh, the, um, the current uh, uh, back, backwater curve for for hundred year floods through the delta. Um, it hasn't been done since what, Eric? Nineteen eighties, nineteen seventies. Mr. Bagabond's behind you too, and oh. you know something okay. about that. Well, why, why don't Why, why don't, don't you, you come up here 